Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our webinar on achieving peer-to-peer -peer fundraising success uh, featuring Marshfield Clinic. We're so happy to have Marie Stewart from Marshfield joining us today alongside Tara Jane O'Donnell from Blackbaud uh, to discuss this topic with you all. Just a few housekeeping items to go over before we get started. Uh, the audio will be coming through your speakers, so please make sure that your computer speakers are turned up. Um, we've also added a few additional resources that we have provided a uh, link in the platform here, so keep an eye out for those. And lastly, we'll be holding a Q&A at the end of the webinar, so any questions you may have, please feel free to post them in that Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen, and we'll be sure to get to them at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'll let Tara and Marie take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. And hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today. Um, so today we're going to be talking a little bit about a couple of different things, but we're going to share and introduce BlackBob's newest peer-to-peer -peer fundraising solution, BlackBob Peer-to-Peer -peer Fundraising, powered by Just Giving. And we're also going to talk a little bit about some market trends that we're seeing in the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising space. Um, we'll talk about a couple of different programs that we're seeing healthcare organizations like yourself leveraging. Um, so whether you're a hospital foundation, hospice, or even a community health clinic, um, a couple of different types of programs you can leverage with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. And then lastly, the part I'm most excited about is to hear from our guest, Marie from Marshfield. She's going to be sharing a little bit more about how she has been able to help successfully promote and build a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising program within their organization. So before we get started, um, I'd love to go ahead and have uh, Marie just introduce herself for a moment, um, and then we'll dive into today's contact. Thanks, Tara. Hi, everyone. I'm Marie, and I am Donor Communications Coordinator at Marshfield Clinic Health System Foundation. Uh, Marshfield Clinic Health System is a network of hospitals and clinics in rural Wisconsin. I'm actually located right smack dab in the middle of Wisconsin. And um, what we do here is enrich lives through philanthropy um, with our patients. And so we are really excited that we've been able to utilize uh, Blackboard's peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform to be able to do that and integrate it into some of the programs that were already existing. So looking forward to sharing that with you today. Awesome. Thank you, Marie, and we're really, really excited to have you join us today. Um, and to introduce myself, my name is Tara Jean O'Donnell, and I work with BlackBod, and I actually work on our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising team within BlackBod. Um, and I've been with BlackBod just a little over 10 years, um, supporting customers with our digital solution portfolio. Um, I am based in New York City and really excited to have all of you on our line today. So I'm actually going to start off, and we're going to talk just a little bit about some of the things that we're seeing and, and why we're starting to see a bigger demand from our donors and our supporters around things like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So, you know, I think for us, BlackBot's really acknowledged that the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is, space is really rapidly growing. And as a response to that, we really focus on providing the industry with tools that can really make it easier for organizations to support their fundraisers and donors. And we also know that a lot of our donors and supporters have a, a pretty high expectation for the types of tools that they're using today. And so we really wanted to be able to help modernize that experience and definitely optimize that, that user experience. Now, as a part of this, one of the things we have seen is that the industry has definitely shown that some of these traditional peer-to-peer -peer fundraising programs, um, so if you think about you know, run, walk, ride events, um, there's a bit of a decline, about by 15%. And what we're seeing is there's an increased interest, though, in people still doing peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, but that's evolved. We're seeing more what we call DIY fundraising. So if you think about somebody who's doing a fundraiser for their birthday, or maybe they're doing it in honor of or in tribute to a loved one. And what's interesting is we've actually seen this trend specifically in the last year um, really increase from things like people even fundraising on Facebook. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, either personally or professionally, have seen somebody um, do a birthday fundraiser. And last year alone, Facebook actually had about $1 billion raised through things like Facebook fundraisers. So we know that there's still definitely a demand around peer-to-peer -peer fundraising from our supporters. It's just changing a bit. And so with about 56% of millennials alone and Gen Z participating in crowdfunding campaigns just in the last 12 months, we know that this is definitely not a, just a new trend, but it's a shift in how this next generation really wants to think about engaging for the causes that they're passionate about. 
And so more generally, we're actually seeing about a 35% year-over-year growth in peer-to-peer fundraising. So it's not just the market telling us this is what they want, but it's actually growing at a very rapid, rapid rate. And, you know, I think for healthcare organizations that are thinking about how to evolve, these types of innovative programs are, are really becoming a critical component um, because we want to make sure that we're really increasing that donor and fundraiser participation and thinking of new strategies to connect with that next generation of supporter. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of different tools in the industry to support with peer-to-peer fundraising, but it's really important to find ones that are going to help you with things like the right tools, give your donors the best-in-class user experience, and then a couple things we'll touch on today is, you know, making sure that we can help improve those back office processes that really are critical to scaling these types of programs. So one of the things I'll touch on today, so BlackBot has actually responded to this type of DIY fundraising demand by providing what we consider an organization-ready but consumer-friendly solution that really is a response to that peer-to-peer fundraising need. And so this really puts a big focus on making giving and fundraising easy for your supporters but it offers a way to increase that acquisition for your organization overall. And one of the ways that we've been able to do that now is um, with one of our newest solutions that I'm excited to announce today is BlackBot Peer-to-Peer Fundraising powered by Just Giving. So for us, we saw an opportunity to not just provide like a more consumer-friendly experience, but also to bring organizations the power of an integrated tool. So the idea with this is that we can help you raise more money by giving your fundraisers a smart fundraiser optimized design but integrate that whole experience with social sharing. So making it easier for them to communicate to their network through Facebook. Um, We can also help you think about, well, how do we increase acquisition and attract more people um, by supporting those kind of more unique, innovative peer-to-peer programs that we're seeing out there. And, you know, as a part of that, what makes it easier and faster for you to deploy this? So we've optimized that administrative experience to think about how you can deploy campaigns Um, faster turnaround time, and also have, you know, the experts with BlackBot help support you with things like best practices around launching a campaign. So we offer, you know, what we would consider support at all levels, um, regardless of the campaign, whether it's something you're just trialing for the first time, um, or, you know, peer-to-peer fundraising is something that's already a big part of what you do on a day-to-day basis. And then lastly, I'd say the solution is really what I'd consider natively BlackBot. So you'll see in some of the the kind of further integrations into our BlackBot portfolio, including things like seamless integration to BlackBot merchant services, um, integrating into our fundraising databases like Razor's Edge NXT and eTapestry. So what I'm going to talk a little bit about is some of those new capabilities, just so you can kind of understand where this kind of fits into that larger ecosystem of not just online giving, but specifically for peer-to-peer fundraising. So this solution, BlackBot Peer-to-Peer Fundraising, this is really a powerful but easy-to-use tool that's meant to support you in executing that next generation of peer-to-peer fundraising. So the idea is it's scalable to support whether you're a large organization or you're small um, and any kind of fundraising-focused industry. So whether you're thinking about just getting started with peer-to-peer fundraising or you're an industry veteran and you're really looking for something that's robust and a sophisticated solution, we can really help scale and support campaigns of all sizes. And we're going to hear from Marie in a little bit. He's going to talk about some of the things that they've done at Marshfield. But, you know, we can support peer-to-peer DIY fundraisers. Um, so that might be that kind of idea of a birthday fundraiser or whatever sort of initiative that your supporters feel compelled by. It might be a designated tribute campaign, um, even things like giving days. Um, and we'll talk a bit about how you can even use this as a really nice way to promote project-based fundraising or employee engagement programs. So there's really no one size fits all. Um, You really have an opportunity to think about what's the culture of giving within your organization and how can you really create a personalized experience around that. And so with this, you can create branded campaigns that are going to reflect your organization's unique look and feel while also empowering the individuals within that to raise more. And a couple just kind of high level components I'll call out. So the solution provides unlimited branded fundraisers. Um, and every one, it offers integrated social sharing features. So how can we make it easier for fundraisers, donors, to communicate and generate and share more about the campaigns that you're doing? Um, but as a part of that, we also have offered a streamlined donation form, so it's easier for people to donate um, from any device, right, whether they're on their phone, on an iPad. We want to make that as easy as possible for them. And then thinking about things like um, showing engagement and action, um, built-in real-time fundraising metrics that are going to help engage your supporters and show them directly how they're impacting individual campaigns. And they can even see down to the dollar how they've actually helped 
uh, an, an individual fundraiser or the overall campaign hit that goal. And then, you know, I think one of the best parts is thinking about things like the integration into Black Bob Merchant Services. So things like daily reconciliation, not having to worry about things like um, fraud, built-in fraud protection. But the data integration with RENXT and eTapestry is really there to help you streamline things like data and gift processing. So kind of giving you that full picture of your supporters and the initiatives that, you know, really interest them so you can target those campaigns in the future. Now, we do support a lot of different organizations with different types of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising needs. I did want to just call out two specific types of programs that we see um, a lot of healthcare organizations using. Um, we'll also hear from Maria as well to talk a little bit about some of the things that they've done. But one of the ones I did want to call out is um, what we call a do-it-yourself fundraising hub. The Forbes actually called do-it-yourself fundraising is one of the top three trends in the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising space to leverage in 2019. And we're seeing this really start to pick up and a demand for a lot of donors and supporters to do this. Um, the kind of idea behind this is it's meant to be a centralized website for your biggest supporters to leverage all of the tools they possibly need to do their own type of fundraiser, right? So providing them branded birthday fundraising pages, maybe they want to do it in memory of a loved one, um, or you can even promote something like an employee engagement campaign. But what we do is we offer some of those best practices and that prescriptive approach to really build out that successful DIY peer-to-peer -peer program. And we're starting to see that the average DIY fundraiser is actually raising 541% more than what we've seen on average from a traditional event participant on a run, walk, ride. So there's definitely a demand to do this. Um, and we just want to make it easier to provide that toolkit so that your fundraisers can do that. The other big one that we see is what we call a crowdfunding hub. Um, so if you think about giving in peer-to-peer, -peer, sometimes it's giving to a person, but sometimes it's giving to a project within your organization that an individual is really excited about. And so many healthcare foundations are now looking for ways to think about personalizing that giving experience for their donors and giving them ways to feel like they're directly impacting those causes. And so with a crowdfunding hub, this can be a really great way to provide a more personalized giving experience for donors by promoting project-based fundraising initiatives and that way people can think about donating directly toward medical expenses or research projects um, or even, you know, individual doctors that are trying to raise money around specific projects that they're doing. We've actually seen the average crowdfunding campaign can help you acquire up to 180 new supporters. So this can be a really great acquisition strategy if you're thinking about how to encourage new donors to give your, to your programs and really kind of creating a, a compelling and personalized story around the gifts that they're making. So these are just a, a couple of different um, ways that we see, you know, organizations really leveraging peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising in kind of specific programs. Um, what I'd love to do, I'm going to pass it over to Marie, and she's going to talk a little bit about how they've been really successful in building peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as a part of what they do, um, not just in individual, um, you know, programs they have, but a couple of different use cases. And so I'm going to pass it over to you, Marie, and let you share a little bit more about what you guys have done. Perfect. Thanks so much. Um, so I'm really excited to be able to share today how we have integrated BlackBob peer-to-peer fundraising solutions, like I said, into the work that we've already been doing. Um, I think a lot of times organizations, especially, you know, more of a small shop, which we do consider ourselves at Marshall Clinic Health System, sometimes it can be overwhelming to think, you know, about how you're going to use a tool or um, potentially, you know, how you're going to use the resources you have um, to really make the most impact. And we have found that utilizing the new platform has really enhanced our efforts and made it easier to do our jobs. Um, so I'm just going to share one example of how we have integrated the platform into currently existing programs and projects. Um, and I'm going to kick it off with one of my favorite uh, events that we host, which is the Volunteer Fundraiser ALS Steps for Hope. <clears throat> so as you can see in these photos, um, this is a really important community event for Marshfield. Um, it's held in our kind of hometown here in Marshfield, Wisconsin. And um, it was started years ago by the Brown family. And you can see them over on the left side there in the blue shirts. Um, they started it back in 2014 because they wanted to do something when John Brown, who's the man on the left, uh, was diagnosed with ALS. 
unfortunately, John himself passed away from complications from the disease just months after the first event. But that only, you know, encouraged the Brown family to want to do even more. Um, so that really fueled their passion for supporting ALS research at Marshfield Clinic, and the event has grown every year since. So last September 2018 was the fifth annual event, and so far in that time they've raised about $40,000 over the time of the event. And again, this is one of our volunteer fundraisers, and what that means for us is that the volunteers, in this case the Brown family, and those who help out with the event, they're really driving the event forward. We help out with promotions, registrations, but this is sort of their event. And we wanted to just provide them with more tools to create more success for them. So we thought, let's add the new Blackboard um, platform. So we suggested the platform to them, and they actually had some great success with it. So you can see in this photo, um, we've got the woman on the left side of the photo there. That is um, Tina, and the woman with the walker is Sue. So Tina had actually been involved with ALS Steps for Hope since the beginning, and um, she never thought that her involvement would grow to be something more when her mother was diagnosed with ALS. So this obviously, again, just fueled her passion for wanting to support ALS research and why it was so important. <clears throat> And once we provided a platform to the Brown family and the ALS Sex for Hope volunteers like Tina, they really latched onto it. And for them, it wasn't just about, you know, seeing their fundraising goal and, you know, all the different donations that were coming in, but it was really about kind of those messages of hope that were shared and feeling like there was a community behind the cause. So. She ended up, you know, posting some different things on her page, and this was uh, just one of them. Um, there was a donation that came in from a family, and Tina's response uh, was, I am speechless. Your donation, both in dollar amount and meaning, is overwhelming. I know my mom and dad value your friendship and support during this struggle. So you can see there that, you know, she took a picture of her mom, who was not doing very well at the time. Um, and this boy who brought her some yummy ice cream. Um, so those were the kinds of things that, you know, really helped the supporters see the direct impact of their giving. Um, unfortunately, Sue ended up passing away, um, but again, that experience only fueled, you know, Tina's drive to help and many of the other supporters as well. <clears throat> And in the end, Tina ended up <laughs> raising, actually smashing her fundraising goal. She ended up with 104% of her goal, which was $1,000 for the event. Um, and again, even though Stu passed away, uh, that only made Tina's resolve increase to help. And it, that, those funds are going to do amazing things for others. Um, the other point I wanted to make with this is the types of comments like you saw um, on Tina's page and the support from those people. For me, as a communications and marketing person, that's invaluable because that's the kind of thing where that's directly from their mouths of how important donations are to these families. And, you know, we can use that to help um, increase support in other ways too. So here's just another example I wanted to throw in. Um, this is Brooke Dozel's fundraising page. Uh, Brooke set up the page in honor of her mom, Kim, who was also diagnosed with ALS. Uh, Kim also sadly lost her battle in 2018, but because of the platform, the Dozel family was able to increase support and heal from the loss of their mother. Um, so I'm gonna read a little bit of what uh, what Brooke put on her story on the platform here. Two months ago, we lost Kim to a one-year-long battle with ALS. Last year, our family received so much support at the ALS walk, and I know how much the event meant to her. She was very weary of going, 
and upset that she couldn't walk the miles herself and had to be in a wheelchair. But she met another woman there affected by ALS who was also in a wheelchair. Kim reached out her hand and said, want to race? <laughs> they connected immediately and their friendship grew as they battled ALS together. We are not in this alone. Um, with continued research at Marshfield Clinic Health System, we can provide hope for future generations. Join me and the Brown family in supporting ALS research. So there again, that means so much to Brooke, so much to their family, um, and it means a lot to us as well because it results in those gifts that are going to support more families like the Dozels. And you can see here again, that fundraising page did incredibly well, um, and Brooke's page ended up raising $750, which surpassed the goal that she had set. And if you remember the Brown family, the ones that started it all, they also had incredible success using uh, the Blackboard peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform, and they raised um, nearly $3,000 on their fundraising page. So all together, the ALS Steps for Hope event in 2018 ended up raising over $6,700 using the Black Bar Peer-to-Peer -peer fundraising platform. And that's just one event. Um, I want to reiterate that our staff really didn't, um, you know, put a ton of extra work into this. We literally just said, here's the platform. We set up our, you know, the main ALS Steps for Hope page. They all created fundraising pages based on that. And it was a great way to just play off of the already successful events and make it even more successful and really touch a lot of people's hearts. So we had wonderful success with that. Um, we also used the platform for our Giving Tuesday efforts uh, in last year, so I think it was December, and had success there. And we are starting to use it now for all of our volunteer fundraisers moving forward, some of our cause awareness months so May is going to be Mental Health Month. We'll set up a page for that. Um, and because of the great, you know, integration we're going to experience with RENXT, that's going to help on our end too. So it's been an awesome addition to our volunteer fundraising efforts, our marketing efforts, and we look forward to, you know, using it in the future. And again, it's not about the funds that are raised through this platform, although you know, that's wonderful, but it's really about the healing journey of these patients and enriching their lives, and that is what we're here to do, and that's what the platform is here to do. So we are really looking forward to continued success. So I'm going to uh, kick it back over to Tara. Awesome. Thank you, Marie. That was wonderful. Um, and I know, you know, it's always really exciting to hear some of these stories. And I think some of the things that we find, right, is um, for a lot of organizations as well, is that you do start to identify these individuals out there that you may just not have had that venue to connect with them. And um, these types of stories really give you guys the opportunity to, to really meet new advocates in, in your community that you may not have known or even out there. Um, so thank you for that, Marie. Um, Sarah, I'm going to let you... Um, pick up with, I know we've got a couple different questions and I think maybe even a poll question for the audience today. Yeah, perfect. And just to reiterate um, from Tara, we really appreciate Marie coming and, and sharing her story today. And um, I'm sure, you know, that's valuable information for all of you uh, to, to learn from. Um, but like Tara said, we do have a few questions. So I did want to get through those. Uh, so one of the first ones, and uh, Marie, it looks like this would probably be aimed more towards you, but they asked, what is your overall peer-to-peer -peer fundraising strategy, and what would you recommend to other organizations thinking about building out a strategy? Sure. So our strategy, um, like a lot of organizations, we really, you know, it used to be just those run walks and that kind of situation. But we have really found, like Tara was saying, that you know, people are wanting a different kind of experience now. Um, they're wanting, you know, faster, more connectivity, um, and to really um, reach more people, you know, and get 
quicker responses on you know their their peer-to-peer fundraising. So we have shifted from you know very event focused to more of a you know it doesn't have to be just the one event. It can be you know um, sharing with these people throughout the year the impact of their support. So we have added you know the Blackboard peer-to-peer fundraising platform to our already existing efforts, and we're continuing to do that. So we, for example, are a Children's Miracle Network Hospital partner. So we've created, I actually think it was in uh, one of Tara's slides, but we've created a page for our CMN Hospitals program, and people can interact with that throughout the year. So we've included that in you know, our social media efforts, our emails that we send out through Online Express, and we're always making it an option for them to continue to engage with us through empowering them with this platform. And I think that for people who are, you know, thinking about how they can, um, you know, start their new strategy or uh, come up with a way to use this, I would just reiterate again that you don't have to come up with a brand new plan. <laughs> you can look at, you know, what you already have and use this in many different ways. So I would say, you know, look at, try to pick three different ways that you could integrate uh, this platform and start there. And then, you know, work with some of your most engaged supporters, your influencers, see if you can get them using it, and I think you're going to see some great results. Awesome. Um, and then Tara, one that is probably geared more towards you. So they asked, how is this platform different than Everyday Hero? Sure. Yeah, sure. sure. No, and, and Oh, sorry. Go on, Tara. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, so I was just going to say, you know, I think so one of the things, uh, for those of you who are not aware, so Everyday Hero is a platform that BlackBot also supports, which is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising solution. Um, one of the things that, you know, we really heard from a lot of our customers were some of the additional features and things that they really wanted to leverage. And so um, BlackBot peer-to-peer fundraising powered by Just Giving is sort of the next generation of our peer-to-peer -peer solution. Um, Everyday Hero is still a solution that we support. Um, but for many of our customers looking for deeper integrations into BlackBot Merchant Services, um, enhanced integrations into Razor's Edge NXP, um, more capabilities around things like direct gift campaigns, um, an improved optimized fundraiser and donor experience, that's where we really introduced our BlackBot peer-to-peer -peer fundraising solution. Um, so, you know, for a lot of our organizations that are using Everyday Hero today, um, we do have some opportunities for you guys to start leveraging some of those new features. So just reach out to your account executive at BlackBot and they can give you some more information on that. Um, and Marie, definitely feel free if, um, if you have any experience on that, you'd love to chat with as well. Yeah, I think that, you know, the Just Giving platform from what we have seen and heard from our supporters is that it's, it's very easy to use. It's um, you know, great for them to see progress to their goal. And on our end, it's, you know, a little bit easier to um, integrate that solution with our uh, Razor's Edge NXT. So we have seen great results from just giving, and, you know, we saw good results from Everyday Hero too, but I think that this is just another way that um, we can keep expanding peer-to-peer -peer efforts and um, empowering people to, you know, to take these things that they're passionate about and create even more support for them. Perfect. Um, another one, too, and I guess this could go to either of you, um, but it says, if our organization is new to peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, what do you recommend as a good place to get started? Yeah, Marie, how about I'll, I'll answer first, and then I'd love for you to answer too, and I think you, you touched on some of this. But, you know, I think um, with peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, there's actually a lot of different entry points. You know, I think it's, um, we, we touched on this today, I think both of us have, but, um, you know, there are a lot of areas where your fundraisers may already be doing peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, right, whether it's something that you're actually promoting or they're even just doing a Facebook fundraiser and you guys are receiving those funds. 
Um, you know, I think one of the easiest things that we're seeing is setting up just a DIY campaign um, to really provide the tool set and notifying your supporter base that if they want to do fundraising, that you guys have the tools to support them with that. Um, one of the things that BlackBot has done that has really kind of made it easier for any organization to take advantage of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is we actually now offer a $0 subscription platform. Um, so any organization at any level can really start to leverage peer-to-peer -to -peer tools. Um, and then, of course, we can definitely support you the more sophisticated the type of program you have is. Um, but Maria, I'd mean, love to hear from you, too, because you definitely have kind of boots on the ground experience on, on where this has been helpful for you guys to just start at any place. Absolutely. Um, so for our organization, we already had, you know, these fundraising events that we are, you know, that we host every year. And it was easy to take this platform and integrate it into those events. And I'm not saying it's going to work for every event, but it could, it could work for many of the different events that, you know, people on, on this webinar might might already be hosting in their organization. So, you know, I would say piggyback on some of the events you already have going. And like you said, you know, if you don't have major events like that, there's always opportunities with birthday fundraisers and engaging some of your most uh, dedicated supporters. So, you know, start by just creating a page on this platform. Um, we're unique at our health system because we have many different areas that people can support. So, for example, ALS is just one of those, and then Virtual Miracle Network Hospital, and we have research, and we have, you know, assistance for families. So, that's great for us to be able to create um, different pages for all those different areas and engage support for all of them. But, you know, for someone who might just be, you know, children's causes, um, that helps streamline the message too. And you can start with just creating one page and push that out through social media, through email, um, and even through, you know, direct mail if there's an opportunity to do that. So I would say start there. Um, try maybe just one event or one communication and, um, and use that as your baseline, and then build off of that. Perfect. Um, and then I guess when, it looks like this is probably the last question, um, more so for you, Marie, but how much of an investment in time or resources did this take for Marshfield? Not a very large investment, which was wonderful for us. You know, I think we're all fundraisers. We're all very busy, um, and we all have you know, these resources that we're working with to try to make the most impact. And I think that every organization has to look at, you know, their resources and say, like, what's important for me to pursue that's going to have the highest return? This is one of those things that's going to have high return for minimal uh, effort, which is what we all love, right? Um, so it's something where it's easy to set up, it's easy to maintain, um, it's easy to, you know, uh, enter into the database and keep track of. Um, so we've had a really simple time um, integrating it into what we are already working on. So it's been it's been a great addition, and and it's it's quite easy. Um, you know, if you can operate Facebook, you can operate this platform. <laughs> so. Um, We've, we've had great success so far, and I think that people are getting, you know, donors are getting more and more trained um, to participate in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and so this is a great tool that they've really latched onto in a lot of cases, and they kind of take it and run with it, which is exactly uh, what we want. Um, it helps them feel empowered, and it helps us on our end to have maximum impact. Awesome. Well, it looks like uh, those are all the questions that we have for today. But once again, we just want to thank you all for joining. Um, obviously, thank Marie and Tara uh, for hosting and presenting to us today. And uh, we hope you all have a great rest of your day. So thanks so much.